33 story hotel and condo project. I'd probably be okay, like, like that. Okay, like stop. Tap. This is a plan by the community for the community. This one here. <laughs> no problem, Ken. Thanks for having me. It's Kent Milgat for Kelowna Now. And we're joined by Michael J. Bollingall, Vice President of Operations at Big White Ski Resort. Thanks for coming in. I always love coming to your couch. We've, we've, this has been going on for a few years, just at different places. We were thinking of calling this a comfy couch, but I don't know if it's comfy enough for that. It's but. fantastic. All right. What a great view of the city. It's a really nice place to come and visit. So we have about 10 minutes. It's always nice to start by getting to know people a little better. So maybe tell our viewers something they might not know about. Well, a lot of people are very surprised to know that I've been in the Valley since 1982. I first came here from Winnipeg, Manitoba to work at the cake. And when we were converting an old spaghetti factory on Burrard into a Keg Caesars that became Dabbers, that is now Shoppers Drug Mart, right beside uh, Safeway downtown. So I've been in the Valley a very long time. Right. And you uh, joined uh, Big White in what role and how long ago was that? In 1985 to run Snowshoe Sam's for Jim Nixon. Jim had uh, Whiskey Jacks back then on Speculation Run. And, uh, and he opened Snowshoe Sam's that had been closed for a few years. Mr. Schumann had just bought the resort out of receivership for just, just over $4 million. And, and today a, a lift is, you know, a detachable quadrature is $8 million. So um, I think it was quite a good deal. They, they certainly think it was quite a good deal. And uh, I ran Snowshoe Sam's for a couple of years and then joined the lift company. And I've been with the lift company since 1987. So... Um you talked about investments, and uh, that's one thing I wanted to bring up. The off-season, there's going to be quite a bit going on, including replacing the powder chair, finally. I mean, that is, yeah. that is such an old chair, though. It's almost sad to see that one go. Yeah, you know, it, it was the first Mueller triple chair ever installed anywhere in the world. We got the first one off the factory floor. And, of course, the components in the chair are literally brand new. I mean, every year we're replacing something. The, the, the BC uh, lift inspection uh, team that come and inspect every lift in British Columbia, you know, it, it's like parts on a helicopter. They can only do so many rotations right. and then you have to change them out. And so the, the, the lift itself is relatively, well, it's, it's 40 years old, 39 right. years old, but the components are relatively new. So it's not like you're replacing it because a 1979 lift is hazardous necessarily. No, no, not at all. We're replacing it because it's one of the most popular places on the mountain to ski. And instead of people standing in line, we're going to hang them in the air. Right. And because, it, it, it yeah. really is the difference between, I, look, I, I feel like it's taken me a long time to get to the top. Well, it's still going to be a six and a half minute ride. It, instead yeah. of having 500 people on the chair, you're going to have 1,900 people on the chair. So right. you're actually going to suspend the lineup in the air right. because the Plus pod can only... Yeah hold so many skiers. Plus it's a per faster hour. ride up though, right? A little because, bit faster, not, because not that it, much. It, it, when, I, when I have skied the powder chair, sometimes the top part of a lift ride is the part you, you know, could do without. A little bit of wind in the face, yeah. so getting that over yeah. with might be nice, right? Yeah, but we're, we're going a little bit higher. Right. And, and the, one of the reasons why it's a fixed grip quad chair is a detachable quad chair, you actually have to shut down in the wind a lot sooner than a fixed grip. Okay. And because we were taking it up to the top of the knoll, so you can get over into the white foot bowl now, you're, you're, okay. you're, there's going to be a little bit more wind at the top on those windy days, okay, so but it's still so going to run. So it's not going to be really a shorter ride up, but it's no, going to be better. No, it'll be a lot more comfortable. Right. And there'll be one extra person on the chair lift with you. Okay. And so another improvement is I know it gets a little bit jammed up when you're, when you're heading out of the village uh, to head down Hummingbird and get skiing, going through that little tunnel under the, under the road. It, it's the the resort's gotten a bit too big for that. So you can expand well, you know that that, that tunnel was built in in the summer of 1986, and it was one of the first things that Mr. Schumann did was create the village on the mountain so you could ski in and ski out of everything, right. and you didn't have to cross a road. So that tunnel in 1986 was ample, big right. enough. Yeah. But now. You know, with, with the amount of snow that we're getting on the mountains, for example, some of those drifts right now, the, the snow banks are 18 to 19 feet high. And it, 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 the road has narrowed. So we want to keep passengers and guests off the road. And we feel like if you're going to widen the tunnel, widen it wide enough so you can have a passenger, foot passenger portion, and you can have a skier snowboarder portion. And so they're not sort of uh, competing for space. Right. So we think that's very important for the safety of the people living below and above the road that want to go visit each other. Now, the other thing you're spending money on in the off season, I take it, is expanding the mountain biking 
end of things. So has that started to, to sort of take hold, the interest in, in the off-season mountain biking at Big White? It, it is a, a huge upside for the future of Big White Ski Resort. You know, with, when you have 17,000 on-mountain beds, and two years ago, you know, we were trying to open for some hiking and just tried to get something going that people could come up and, and use, yeah. their, use their accommodation in the summertime. And we, we felt that mountain biking was one of those components. It really happens uh, to be the favorite passion of our president and CEO, Peter Plimmer. He is a, a, an exceptional downhill mountain biker, and his passion for that is huge. Plus, we have some of the best athletes in the world that live in the central Okanagan that are downhill mountain bikers. So, you know, we went to Tom and Bass and, and literally said to them, hey, if we give you a piece of paper and a couple of bulldozers, do you think you could sketch out a couple of runs and then go make them? Um, we signed up uh, Alpine uh, Mountain Bikes from Whistler, uh, uh, Judd and his team, and they've, they've actually sculpted out of that mountain some incredible mountain biking, and we're just continuing on. We have about a budget of about a million dollars a year, and uh, I don't say that lightly because a million dollars is a lot of money, but it's a million dollars to dig in the dirt. You, right. you, you really only get a dirt track after you spend that million dollars, mm -hmm. but it is the most thrilling um, ride, and, and, and as a family resort, we're making runs for everybody in the family. If, if your child can squeeze a handbrake, then they're going to be able to ride on some of our, our mountain biking courses. As a resort, um, we're nearing the end of the season. How, how, how does it uh, go down? Has it been a good year? You know, one of the most frustrating things that we feel in the resort business, especially at Big White, is we will close with over 300 centimeters of snow. And, and yesterday was a great example, this weekend. It was sunny in Kelowna for one of the first times this year. The amount of bicycles, soccer players, baseball players, anybody that could find a patch of grass somewhere was out enjoying um, the great outdoors of Supernatural British Columbia. And we just find that people, they find something else to do. Right. So we're going to close uh, April the 8th this year. We've had one of the busiest seasons in our history, but it's it just people lose interest. They, right. they, and they already have a ticket. But they, 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 the bikes come out, the boats come out, the skateboards come out, the so baseball yeah. starts, soccer starts. So even if there was still some good skiing to be had, it, it, it's, it's a losing battle by the time it gets sunny and green down here for you. Kent, we, it, with the snow that we have right now, we could easily be running a lift into May. Easily. But there, there, there's just people don't come. They just, you know, there's only one real resort in North America, too, uh, in Canada that, that stay open. Sunshine Village in, in, in Banff and Whistler Blackcomb. And, and they have good spring product, but they're very much event driven. You know, the World Ski and Snowboard Festival happens in Whistler. That's huge. Um, Kennedy's uh, environment race happens in, uh, in, uh, in Sunshine Village at, at the end of uh, April, early May. That's big. So when you have those type of events to attract people, it's great. But let's remember that, you know, the, 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 the people in the central Okanagan, there would be combined with Silver Star Apex and Big White, probably about 30,000 people that have a ticket to one of those resorts. And they, they, they say, thank you very much. I've had a great year, but I'm moving on to do other things. Right. And um, all these skier visitors, has it changed over the years who's coming to Big White? We, we went through that period in, in uh, 2007, 2008, and, and uh, with a bit of a mortgage crisis there. And it seemed to kind of stop the flow of Americans a little bit. Um, I don't know if they're back now, or has it, has it kind of changed the demographic that Big White reaches out to? Um, yeah, well, the, the, the geographical location of our markets have changed slightly. I mean, Washington State at one stage, probably around 1999-2000 to 2004, were buying 50% of the accommodation that was available for sale on the mountain. And, and that was a huge upside for us because they were a five-hour drive away. Um, with, with Alaska Airlines now flying in, into Kelowna, we started to see Oregon, we started to see some California flights. And, and California this year is, is up actually substantially. We're starting to see a lot more business out of California because Tourism British Columbia is spending more time down there and we're, we're going along for the ride. With the non-stop flights for Ontario, that's been our biggest growth market domestically. The exciting market is Australia. With, with three non-stop flights now literally daily, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, um, getting into Vancouver, we're now seeing jet service instead of Dash 8 service out of Vancouver into Kelowna. And that benefits everybody because those Australians will come in on that early morning flight. Well, 
the business community and, and, the, and the family and friends community of the Central Okanagan are going back to Vancouver on jets. They're going back to Toronto on jets. And we've proven that, uh, and, and, and Sam is great at this at the airport, any city pair that we do get, that's where we go and play. When Air Canada announced that they were going into Edmonton twice daily, we're now in partnership with the Edmonton Airport Authority, and we're doing bigger promotions than we've ever done before in Edmonton. And we have a ski-free promotion for the last week of April. And it's taken our accommodation from 40% occupancy to 60% occupancy in that week in two weeks. So we, we see that those things are successful. Where the airport decides to play, we're going to go and spend our money because they're, they're 10, 15% of the population of any city in Canada are skiers and snowboarders. And as you know, everything east of the Rockies is dead set flat, so they've got to come here to enjoy themselves. Right. That's good for us. Very hey, good I for appreciate us. you taking the time to come in and see us here. Yeah, I, I, I must admit, I like your coach. I'm going to have to come All back right. with some more secrets for you. Thanks a lot. Michael J. Bollingall on Kelowna Now.